as you can probably tell, I'm quarantined. Tommy Lee's trying to get things going. Looks like him and Sherry. How are you feeling? I just running a fever. I'm I'm feeling fine. I thought you did a good job, awesome, Mark. Do what? Said, are you ready? I did. I've not got tested. I'm just staying in. Said, are you ready? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, it is time to go ahead and start our meeting, call this meeting to order. Uh, I am having to sit in. I'm Steve Jones, Bay County Mayor, and sitting in for Mr. Ben Danner. I think Ben is under the weather. Ben, are you on with us here? Okay. All righty. Ms. Sherry, would you call the roll, please? Brent Bush. Andy Duggan. Roger Turney. Fred Howell. Dale Reagan. Here. Tanya Spears. Doug Young. Alan Foster. Here. Emmett Sherrill. James Mayberry. Here. Lisa Patrick. Here. Ethan Hadley. Here. Here. Tim Stribman. Josh Miller. Edith Armstrong, Pam Redmond, Dwayne Blair, Suzanne Williams, Jimmy Johnson, Harvey Stowers, Pat Clark, <laughs> Randy Hattie, here. Lloyd Williams, here. Troy York, Steve Jones, here. Jerry Wilmore, here. Kenneth Collins, Richard Thomas. Ben Danner, Curtis Hayes, Shannon Campbell, <coughs> Carrie Gardner, Gibson. Elder, Randy Porter, here, John Martin, Lisa Chapman Fowler, AJ Real, here, Ricky Shelton, Amy New, Jeff Mason. Here. Sable Marie Smith. Here. Hollis Mullinex. John Potts. Here. Patrick Gino. Greg Wilson. Mickey Robinson. Stacy Mills. Jimmy Haley, Brian Chastain, here, Joel Akers, Trent Crater, 
Cook Anderson, Marvin Les, Don Alexander, here. Dean Robinson, here. Jeff Young, Ray Spidey, Roger McCann, Representative Cameron Sexton, Senator Paul Bailey. Did you get Jimmy Hayes? We got 20. We only have 20 and we got to have 22 for a quorum. Jimmy Hayes. Jimmy Hayes on the line. 21. You want to make sure. Pickett County is on as well. I don't know. I didn't hear him say anything. Okay. All right. With Pickett County, then we have 22. We would like to ask Sherry has asked me to uh, ask you the ones that are attending remotely to state your name if you make a motion or a second so that we will know remotely. We don't we want to welcome everybody here today. And uh, for those that are sick and not able to attend today, we wish you well and hope you get better before the holidays get started here. Uh, number three on the agenda then is going to be approve, uh, approval of the consent agendas. We've got those and we'd entertain a motion to accept those. Jimmy Haley, I make that motion. Jimmy Haley made the motion. Do we have a second? Second. A second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Any discussion on any of those? If not, call the roll, please. Mayor Raven? Yes. Doug Young? Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Lisa Patrick? Yes. Ethan Hadley? Yes. Randy Hay? Yes. Floyd Williams? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Carrie Barner? Randy Porter? Yes. Juan Martin? Yes. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sailor Marie Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. Jimmy Hayden? Yes. Ron Chastain? Yes. Trent Prayer? Yes. Don Alexander? Aye. Dean Robinson? Yes. Ray Okay, motion carried. Next on the agenda is the CAIC report. And Megan, I think you're going to do a report on that one. Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, we are going to have a quick update on the revolving loan funds that we manage um, in partnership with USDA Rural Development and the Economic Development Administration. 2020 has been a very busy year for our revolving loan funds. Uh, initially, when the pandemic hit, um, one of the first actions that we took was to try to support our existing loan clients, and we offered a deferment as needed for up to three months for our existing clients, and we actually only had eight 
businesses that needed to take advantage of that. Um, and all of those loan clients have resumed their regular payments. So we feel that that was a, a good move on behalf of the board and a good opportunity to support our businesses as they're we're trying to fight the, the closures and, and the unexpected changes through the COVID-19 pandemic. Next, we established a disaster relief program, and this was designed to supplement the federal programs that were coming out through the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loans, um, but some clients and some businesses in the region weren't able to get the support they needed from those, and so um, we created a streamlined process for businesses to um, access working capital funds of up to $25,000 for five years at 4% interest. And so since that's been in place, we've been able to serve 24 businesses through the disaster loan program, totaling $522,000 in loans. And then looking back over the past 18 months, since our um, annual meeting had to be a little bit later this year due to the pandemic. All of these numbers do reflect from July 1 of 2019. Um, and, and in that time, our microloan program, which was um, created for startup businesses, has also continued to prove successful. Um, in the past 18 months, we've been able to support 11 startup businesses across the region um, for a total of $235,000 loan to those businesses. Also this year, um, the Economic Development Administration received an allocation of federal funds through the CARES Act that they then distributed across existing revolving loan funds like ourselves across the nation. And um, we were very proud um, to receive the largest allocation in the state. We have a strong loan program that's been in place since the 80s. And based on the status of our program, the, you know, it's had good management, we've had low default rates, and we were actually awarded just over five million dollars to lend out to businesses in the Upper Cumberland. So of that allocation, $2,162,750 went out. Um, we're currently going through the review process or the, the approval process for an additional $1.85 million for another um, of another group of loans and we've got another three sitting there um, that are being underwritten and reviewed internally and that will then be going through that review process uh, hopefully here in, in just a short amount of time so um, have been able to make a really good impact through those new funds in a very quick amount of time. We've also had three farm loans uh, awarded this year for $33,500 and then our traditional funds, those that I mentioned that you know we've had for, for several decades. Um, we have assisted eight businesses through our traditional funds that total $2,071,500. So in summary, just in the past 18 months, between those five different um, categories of, of programs, our revolving loan funds have lent out $5,024,750 to 48 different businesses across the region. So we're very pleased um, that we've been able to support this number of businesses in this way. And we've just also been very encouraged by the fact that so many of these are growing, they're buying new equipment, they're expanding, they're using this time to uh, stabilize their business or grow their business. And so we're very hopeful that we're able to, to play a role in strengthening our economy and helping these businesses come out of the pandemic and go into 2021 in a stronger position. The federal program, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, did have an allocation. Um, we have we're working with one company currently that received some roof damage um, through the tornado. Actually, not the one that hit Putnam County, but a much smaller one that came through White County um, about a week after the the large tornado. Um, but I believe a lot of our local businesses that were directly impacted have been able to use the federal economic injury disaster loan that was designated just to that event. So we've had a lot of um, 
newspaper articles, especially when it was first allocated, um, worked with our, our media team. We've put things on Facebook, social media. Um, we also, you know, try to get the word out through banks that we work with. And obviously we don't have connections to every single bank, but we've got a pretty good network. And um, they have also sent us referrals. A couple of these projects we are able to actually work with a bank where they are a portion of the project, we're a portion of the project. Um, so, and, there, and we actually also have some plans of doing, you know, another round of, of articles and different things. Honestly, we've had so much activity that we're trying to be cautious that we don't overpromise something, you know, and, and funds be depleted because we do have a lot of interest in, with the amount that we have right now. Um, but we will be reevaluating that as soon as this next batch is approved and if funds are still available, we'll do some more. Um, they've been radio interviews, newspaper articles all across the region. Are you leaving, you know, farm loans and only money for farms? I'm sorry. Are you leaving farm loans? We have an existing program that we've had for several years through the Department of Agriculture for farm loans. It is a smaller pot of funds, um, so we are limited in the volume that we can do, um, but it, uh, it's always seemed to work out fairly well. Obviously, those payments are revolving, and as money comes in, you know, it's available. We've tried to decrease the amount the size of those loans or just ask the farmers to really truly evaluate exactly what they have to have because uh, we want to be able to help as many as possible uh, but we do have a limit on that program right yes we do have some funds available right now but that is a, a smaller pot um, well, there's also some really good, I know a lot of them use farmer's credit and there's some other traditional lenders that do a lot of work with farmers. And so typically if we don't have funds available, we're able to partner and pair them with the groups that, that can meet their needs you at that time. Do you know the information out in the co-ops or farmers co-ops that long we have in the past. Again, it was um, with that fund being so limited, we've not had um, an excessive amount to market um, based on supply and demand. But we have done that in the past, and we've honestly, word of mouth among the farmers tends to travel the most because they're they're they talk to each other, they go to cattlemen's associations, they go to different things where they're in the same place. Um, involved in that, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. You want to go ahead and go with number five here, the update on resolution 20-12.2. Yes, thank you so much. So the next thing that we want to go over is our 2020 update for the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. Uh, this document is commissioned by the Economic Development Administration, but it's designed to be a roadmap for all of us as organizations, as communities, as leaders and stakeholders to all be working together in coordination towards the same goals. Um, the Upper Cumberland region's main five-year update was completed in 2017, and then annual updates are completed for the next four years. It's on a, on a five-year rotation. So the full strategy, as I mentioned, was completed in 2017, and the five main goals that were identified at that time, which are still priorities, were workforce development, advocacy, industrial development, retail development, and transportation infrastructure. Um, each year, additional goals have been added to this. Um, over the last couple of years, we've seen an increase in addressing substance abuse, poverty rate, housing. Uh, specifically this year, there was an increased um, push and focus towards tourism development with all of the great recreational assets that we have and the need for people to be outside and distant. Um, entrepreneurship um, as, as the job market changed and then specifically just in general COVID recovery and response. So this year we did add a new section to the document specifically addressing COVID-19. Um, it details a little bit about the impacts to the region already and some of the initial plans for that recovery. Uh, we are aware that that's going to be an ever-evolving process as we all learn how to, to move through and out of the pandemic. So that will be reflected in, in future documents and future plans um, and will be a, you know, a fluid approach to recovery. Um, this year, despite pandemic limitations, we were able to meet with 13 of our 14 communities um, with a variety of in-person and virtual attendees and still host strategy sessions to help address these areas. Uh, we also were able to still meet with our SEDS committee um, as well as local and regional stakeholders. So all of that information feeds into the annual update. 
And there is a resolution in your packet, which is just something that we would send to EDA, acknowledging that the board has, has reviewed the SEDS update and, and is in approval of that. So as you review, uh, I know there's some physical copies here in the room, and uh, it was also emailed uh, this morning to those of you who are online. Um, Thank you for those of you who hosted us. I know this year we had a lot of extra obstacles with digital and virtual and setting up quasi meetings such as today, you know, in person and Zoom. Um, so just want to say thank you to all those who hosted us and um, brought all the regional partners into your community and, and helped us um, to strategize for your community as well as provide valuable information for this document. to accept resolution 1202. So entertain a motion. L. Reagan, so moved. L. Reagan, do we have a second on that? Motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion on it? If not, roll please. Mayor Reagan? Yes. Just Young? Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Lisa Patrick? Yes. Ethan Hadley? Yes. Ian Armstrong? Yes. Randy Hay? Yes. Lloyd Williams? <clears throat> yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Harry Garner? Randy Porter? Yes. Joel Martin? Yes. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Dale Marie Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Ron Chastain? Yes. Trent Prater? Yes. Don Alexander? Yes. Dean Wayne Robinson? Yes. Okay, next is our upcoming development district budget, Ginger. And I lost you. I was looking down, <laughs> look over your there. So everyone should have received a copy in their packet or via email. Um, we actually presented this budget at a previous meeting, but we also wanted it to present it at our annual meeting. Um, what we're presenting based on UCDD is a balanced budget with total revenues and expenditures of $7,760,405. Um, we also have included a copy of the budget for our administrative services. Total administrative services that we projected for this fiscal year is $2,140,406. Administrative budget will include all those costs that are associated with myself, finance, HR. These are the costs that are shared with um, Upper Cumberland Human Resource Agency. We have a shared management agreement. So based on this, um, our proposed indirect cost rate would be 23.25% for the year. Um, at the end of the year, we actually calculate what that comes out to based on actual cost, but based on our projections, that's what it will run this fiscal year. And like I said, these costs are shared between both agencies. And does anybody have any questions? Okay, hearing no questions, here would you do a roll call, please take your hand. Dale Raven? Yes. Alan Foster? Mm -hmm. 
James Mayberry? Yes. 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 That was Alan. Yeah, that was Alan that got a guess in there too. It took me a second to unmute. Ethan Havick? Yes. Yes. Ethan Armstrong? Yes. Randy Haney? Yes. Lloyd Williams? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Harry Garner? Randy Porter? Yes. John Martin? Yes. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sarah Marie Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Ron Chastain? Yes. Fred Prater? Yes. John Alexander? Yes. yes. Dean Ross? Yes. A motion carried. Number seven is resolution 20 12 3, and our council is here. Mr. Rader. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what we have for you today, um, as you know, this building was constructed and uh, permanent financing was obtained back in May of this year. Uh, and when that was taken out, uh, the Upper Cumberland Development District is the borrower on the loan to Wilson Bank and Trust on what um, I believe are very favorable terms. Um, in a, because of the process where we uh, do reimbursements and um, through our audit, it would be advantageous to transfer the title to this building and the financing into the uh, affiliated entity, Cumberland Regional Development Corporation. Wilson Bank and Trust has agreed to do that. I've been very cooperative with us and working with us very well on this. Um, what we want to do is uh, transfer the title to the building to CRDC. Uh, they will assume the loan UCDD will guarantee the loan. And so this resolution just authorizes us to do that. It's really an administrative type of a housekeeping change, uh, but we want to uh, do that in order to have a clean audit. I'll answer any questions you all may have. Do we have a copy of that? Uh, yes, ma'am, the resolution's in your book. It's uh, behind the audit. I, I can help you try to, I can just give you my copy. It's just past three pages, three pages. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Entertain a motion to accept. Motion. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? Dale Reagan. Yes. Alan Foster. Yes. Jeff Mayberry. Yes. James Mayberry. Yes. Lisa Patrick. Yes. Ethan Hadley? Yes. Bennett Armstrong? Yes. Randy Haney? Yes. Lloyd Williams? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Harry Garner? Randy Porter? Yes. John Martin? Yes. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Cyber Marie Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Ron Chastain? Yes. Trent Prager? Yes. John Alexander? Yes. Kenny Robinson? Yes. And most carried. Okay, next is our executive director report. Mark, you online and you want to give a report? I am, and I'm going to be fairly brief uh, this morning. Just a couple of uh, things I'd like to throw out there. Obviously, with everything going on this year, it has been very stressful on the agency, but uh, I, I am very excited to say that we've had, I feel like, a good year, even though it's been an unprecedented year. Uh, because of everything going on, a lot of additional funds flowing down. Obviously, uh, Megan's already talked to you about the loan fund and, and 
uh, the, the amount of money that we have put out the, the door has been tremendous and we're very excited about that. And one thing that uh, I just want to add to that, you know, one of the programs that had the smallest amount listed is one of the ones that we're the most excited about. And that was our micro loan program that actually started before uh, the pandemic. And, and while we've only put out $235,000, that's allowed 11 startup companies to get started and, and get growing in our region. And we're also excited because that's, that's being taken notice of by other agencies. And, and in fact, Megan and I have re received a lot of interest and there's one company out of Chattanooga that's very interested in letting us to, to administer a pot of funds on their behalf, doing the exact same thing here in the region, hopefully getting businesses to grow and to get off the ground. So we're very excited about that. And Megan, her team's done a wonderful job. Um, Tommy, I think has handed out a graphic talking about the number of grants uh, that's uh, been uh, secured through his department. I'm, I'm gonna say, Tommy, do you have anything you'd want to say about that? Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Farley. If you all just would uh, turn your attention to, to this little graphic that I, that I passed out. Uh, you know, 2020 has brought a lot of uncertainty and a lot of new normals, but uh, one of the things that we are very proud of is the number of total grant dollars that were awarded to the region this year. And, and I just, we, it couldn't have happened without the hard work and the great work of our team uh, in the community development department and the economic development department. So we're very proud of the work that they've done. They had to work from home and work a lot via Zoom, but if you look down there, uh, total awarded grant dollars are over 11 million, and that's the most we've done in my tenure here at the development district. So we're very proud of that. That has generated over $300,000 in administration, which which allows us to kind of keep the lights on here. So that's so that's so that's a good thing. And Mr. Farley, if I could just real quick, I want to recognize a couple of communities that that crossed the one million dollar mark. Cumberland County uh, got a grant for a million dollars. Uh, City of Salina with just a little bit over a million dollars in grants this year. City of McMinnville had $1.3 million this year and, and leading the way uh, with a historic top year and that is the City of Baxter and I just want to congratulate all of the award winners and especially the town of Baxter and Mayor John Martin and his team down there. Uh, again, Mr. Farley couldn't be prouder of our team uh, here at the Development District for all the work that they've done in securing these grant dollars for our region. Thank you, sir. Most definitely. And I know we also have uh, housing and aging and both those departments uh, over the last year has, they've really stepped it up, putting services out the door, obviously a lot of additional funding that we've received uh, in our housing. We're very excited. Uh, and since our last annual meeting, we've, we've purchased an apartment unit uh, down in uh, the Athens area and we're getting ready to build an addition uh, to our one in, in Morrison. Uh, that should start sometime early part of 2021. Uh, aging, uh, aging has, has really put a lot of money out the, the door, especially with meals and services to the clients, making sure they're maintained through this difficult time. Uh, I was talking to Holly earlier uh, today and uh, uh, one grant we're very excited, we want to make mention of, not sure we've, we've informed the board yet, uh, but uh, they have secured around $100,000, not, not quite $100,000, but almost that amount. Uh, and they're going to be putting uh, telehealth uh, equipment in uh, all the senior centers that are, are open to that ideal. Now, not everybody wants to take advantage of that, but we've got several that wants to set up uh, stations inside the senior centers for telehealth. And we think that's uh, a great addition for those programs that have to provide uh, benefit to the senior centers as well as the the citizenry that can uh, use that equipment. Uh, and the last thing I just want to throw out there, and we're we've got a couple big grants uh, that we're waiting on. Uh, you know, one we'll talk about in at, at the HRA meeting here in just a second. But for the development district that works sort of in connection with the the human resource agency, uh, we're waiting word on a return to work grant through the Appalachian Regional Commission that'll be working with people coming out of sustenance treatment, hopefully working to get them back employed. Uh, so we're very excited about that grant, waiting word virtually at any day to, to find out if we've received that or not. Uh, a lot of great things going on, although we've had a lot of difficulties. Uh, I'll go ahead and say right now uh, at both agencies, um, 
we're, we're struggling. We've got a lot of people um, quarantined, a lot of people out sick, uh, and we're just trying to manage that day by day. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna turn it back over. That's my report. Okay, thank you, Mark. Anyone have any questions for Mark? If not, we'll go on to number nine. On December 10th, uh, the nominating committee met and uh, nominated uh, Randy Hetty as the chairman for next year with uh, Jeff Mason being nominated as vice chairman and Danny Robinson and Randy Porter to can remain in the positions that they're in. So what we'd like to do now is uh, entertain a motion to accept the uh, nomination committee's uh, recommendation. Make that motion. Make that motion, Steve. Okay, Dale made a motion. We have a second. Okay, okay so everybody has a second. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Not. Nah, I'll roll, please. Dale Reagan? Yes. Yeah. Doug Young? Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Lisa Patrick? Yes. Ethan Yes. Bennett Armstrong? Yes. Randy Hayes? Yes. Lloyd Williams? Yes. Dave Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Harry Barter? Randy Porter? I'll abstain since I'm on the officer. John Martin? Yes. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? I will abstain. Sarah Marie Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Francesca Stain? <clears throat> Trent Prater? Yes. John Alexander? Yes. Uh, okay, I guess the next item on the agenda, uh, Randy, you and uh, Danny Wayne want to come up here so that they can get in front of everyone. We're going to do an oath to swear you in. And Jeff Mason, we want you to stand up when we get ready and raise your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we ready? All right. This is also the office for the. Do you raise your right hand? Got your hand up, Jeff. You affirm that you faithfully undertake and perform the duties of the offices which you are about to assume, that you will diligently strive through your work and your offices for closure cooperation among closer cooperation among the member governments of the Upper Cumberland Development District for the future of the concept of regional development and for improved coordination of services for all the citizens of the Upper Cumberland. I do. I do. All righty. <laughs> The chairman. So we'll let you take over as chairman now. For the rest of the other business. You got any other business? So you'll, adjourn. you'll do HRA too, right? So any other business to come before the ECDD Board of Directors meeting today? Annual? All right. If not, then I, I got one statement I want to make. As a county mayor and a city mayor, uh, and I, this is a compliment to the DD, and I'll do the same thing for the LRA. But during this unprecedented year that we've had, and all of y'all know that, and, and the government has just tried to help our people, and you just get flooded with all this opportunity to spend help, money. And I just want to commend the development district for their efforts and what they've done in getting that money out and getting it distributed through CAIC, also through area and aging, uh, what they've done. Uh, it's just been phenomenal. So from 
uh, the county mayor standpoint, and I'm sure the city mayors will agree, uh, we just appreciate everything that you've done, and so thank you for your efforts uh, this past year. Right. And, uh, I think it was awesome. All right, with nothing else, if there's nothing else for the board meeting today, uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. I got a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Got a second by Steve, a motion by Jimmy Wayne. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, 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 any opposed say aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Okay, we're ready to go on into the UCHRA meeting. We'll call it to order. Greg is not here today, so I've been asked to uh, do this one also. Um, Sherry, would you do a roll call, please? Greg Lewis. Andy Dublin. Andy Dublin. Jeff Attorney. Ethel Liner. Dale Raven. Here. Tanya Spears. Lori Stringfield. Here. Amy Cheryl. James Mayberry. Here. Lisa Patrick. <clears throat> Ellie Tipton. Here. Tim Strickland. Josh Miller. Denny Armstrong. Here. Pam Redmond, Dwayne Blair, Billy Adcock, Here. Jimmy Johnson, Harvey Stowers, Pat Clark, <clears throat> Linda Upchurch, Randy Haney, Lloyd Williams, here. Steve Jones. Yes. Jerry Wilmore. Yes. Kenneth Hollis. Lynette Shaw. Ben Danner. Curtis Hayes. Kay Holbert. Harry Gardner, Sam Gibson, Linda Pastrick, here, Randy Porter, here, John Martin, here, Lisa Chapman Fowler, JJ Reels, here, Ricky Sheldon, Johnny Wheeler. Jeff Mason. Here. John Marie Smith. Here. Thomas Mullinex. <clears throat> John Potts. Here. Forrest Nesbitt. Greg Wilson. Nikki Robinson. <clears throat> Don Collinsworth. Here. Jimmy Haley. Here. John Chastain. Here. Joel Akers. Trent Prater. Here. Sue Anderson. Marvin Lust. Marilyn Davis. Here. Kenny Robinson. Here. Jeff Young. Ray Spivey. Cheryl Sullivan. Here. Representative Cameron Sexton. Senator Paul Baker. This is Alan Foster. I'm still here. Okay.
All right, do we have a quorum? Number three on the agenda is approval of the consent agendas. I there kind of motion to approve that. Got a motion by Danny Wayne to approve. Second by Sarah. Okay, got a motion. Second, any discussion on any of those items? Ah, no, roll, please. Dale Wayne. Yes. Tanya Spears. Yes. Lori Stringfield. Yes. Alan Foster. Yes. James Mayberry. Yes. Kelly Tipton. Yes. Dan Armstrong. Yes. Jimmy Adcock. Yes. Randy Handy. Yes. Lloyd Williams. Yes. Arbor Wheeler. Yes. Steve Jones. Yes. Jerry Wilmore. Yes. Lisa Patrick. Linda Patrick, yes. <laughs> Randy Porter. Yes. John Martin. Yes. JJ Reels. Yes. Jeff Mason. <clears throat> yes. Sarah Marie Smith. Yes. John Potts. Yes. Don Collinsworth. Yes. Jimmy Haley. Yes. Don Chastain. Yes. Chris Prager. Yes. Marilyn Davis. Yes. Jenny Robinson. Yes. Cheryl Sullivan. Yes. Okay, we have a uh, motion carried. Okay, number four is going to be the Head Start report. Mark, are you going to give that? I, I will, and you've got quite a few documents behind that tab. Um, these are your normal reports that have to be approved every meeting. Uh, there are uh, a couple grant extensions uh, where money is rolling over. You've got those in there just to approve as well. Uh, one other thing I might make mention of, uh, obviously with the Head Start, we are all the time required to do additional trainings and stuff. And this month is the uh, uh, website update. And I'd encourage all of you when you get a chance, if you would just go to the uh, UCHRA Head Start uh, webpage, just to review yourself of that program, the information on there. Um, and uh, encourage you to get a little bit to know a little bit more about our Head Start program. There again, we are still waiting. I'll go ahead and say this now. We're waiting uh, any day uh, for word on the early Head Start uh, grant applications we have in. Uh, we haven't really received any notification yet, but we expect that uh, sometime before the end of the year, hopefully, if all goes well. Now, uh, based on what we receive in that uh, award, Obviously, uh, uh, there may be a whole lot of work going on the first of the year, or if that doesn't go our way, we're, we're going to start applying for another round, uh, the next opportunity. But uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you've got those reports that just need to be approved, and I submit them for your approval. Okay, you've heard the executive director's reports on those. Entertain a motion to accept those. Move approved. Got a motion. Got a second. Got a motion and a second. Who second that? Dale Reagan. Dale, thank you. Okay, motion second. Any discussion or any questions for the executive director? If not, roll call, please. Dale Reagan? Yes. Arnold yes. Spears? Yes. Yes. Corey Stringfield? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Kelly Tipton? Yes. Dan Armstrong? Yes. Jimmy Adcock? Yes. Randy Haney? Yes. Lloyd Williams? Yes. Barbara Wheeler? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Linda Pastrick? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. John Martin? Yes. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sarah 
Trent Crater. Yes. Marilyn Davis. Yes. Kenny Robinson. Yes. Cheryl Sullivan. Yes. Motion carried. Number five, is there CB, CSBG report and personnel? Good morning, everyone, and thanks for attending either in person or virtually. I would like to go over a report. I put some data on your folders, and we've also emailed that out to the folks that are attending virtually. This program information are programs out of the Community Services Department that are administered through our local 14 county offices. And we call this the CSBG report because the Community Services Block Grant requires that we update at every board meeting, but we decided to include all of the programs that run through the county offices on your report. So if you'll take a look at that, the total households served for the month of November was 1,357. And if you go through the rest of this chart, you can see how many cases of Insure was sold, the counties that still have the nutrition program, the number of meals served. Then we make it to our LIHEAP column, our energy assistance program. And you can see that during the month of November, we served 747 households, yet no funds were available to go out. So I wanted to explain this column and let you know what's been going on behind the scenes with that. So our new program here starts in October with the Law Heat program, and we've been waiting on funds for the new 21 year. But behind the scenes, we had received CARES Act funds and also supplemental funds. So in the last two weeks, a little over $1.9 million has went out to everyone who had applied during the program year and that was awarded. They received an extra $325 in addition to the amount that they had already received during this program year through the end of September. So that's 6,019 households that got that additional $325. And those funds have gone out. We've been working to get those out in the last few weeks. So before Christmas, those 619 households will have additional funds for their electricity. And that will be helping also our electric vendors and different things like that, making sure folks are able to pay their bills. So good news with the 21 program light heat funds, those have come out. Um, we're waiting to sign the contract today and get that in. So we hope to start moving these funds out to, to help folks that, that have applied those 747 individuals. We also have a crisis light heat component and this is folks that have a cutoff notice within 48 hours. And you can see that we serve 335 houses holds in November to keep, help keep those lights on so they were not disconnected. We also received through CSBG, we received some CARES Act funds and it has to be tied to COVID. We can assist with rent, utilities, um, basic necessity vouchers. We serve 13 folks, 13 households. Um, also just through our regular CSBG program, we serve 27 households. There's dollars amounts attached to that. We also have the weatherization program, the number of applications that we've received, our in-home services, clients, and visits. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you. Does anyone have any questions over the, the programs that are running through our county offices? All right, thank you guys very much. Next is our UCHRA budget. And Jenny, you're going to go over that with us? So each of you should have received a copy of the budget in your packet or via email. It's um, in the same format as UCDD. Based on this budget, we have projected total revenues of $22,531,000. $320. We are also presenting a balanced budget, but the big difference you'll see between this one and the development district is our total expenditures projected are $21,034,097, which would leave excess revenue over expenditures. That revenue projected would be for transportation, which is restricted 
for transportation use. So that wouldn't be anything that would go into um, unrestricted fund balance. It would go to transportation fund balance. Um, also, in addition, that's based on and contingent upon an additional second allocation for CARES Act for our transportation program. Um, this budget was presented and approved as well in the previous meeting, but we wanted to present it to the full board for approval as well. So I don't know if there's any questions regarding the human resource budget. Any questions? If not, entertain a motion to accept the budget that Jenner's presented. Okay, we have a second. Okay, sir, got a second. Got a motion to second. Any discussion? Any questions? No, oh, I'll roll, please. Dale Raven? Yes. Tanya Spears? Lori Stringfield? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Kevin Timson? Yes. Minnie Armstrong? Yes. Jimmy Adcock? Yes. Randy Hattie? Yes. Lois Williams? Yes. Barbara Winter? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Steve Linda Pastry? Yes. Andy Porter? Yes. John Martin? Yes. Jeff Jenner Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sarah Marie Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. John Hollingsworth? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Ron Justine? Yes. Trent Prater? Yes. Marilyn Davis? Yes. Danny Robinson? Yes. Cheryl Sullivan? Yes. A motion carried. Thank you. Next, number seven is line of credit. Ginger. Okay. Um, also, as well in your packet, you should have received a copy of our line of, line of credit renewal. Um, promissory note and a resolution that was prepared by the bank. So our current line of credit actually expires today. Um, within the promissory note, you'll see the terms and I'll just go over those briefly so you don't have to go through all that information, but it's 18 months and it was for $2.5 million and the rate would be 4.95% interest, which actually is a little bit less than our last uh, line of credit renewal, which was 5% and this is interest only. And it would extend it for 18 months. Okay, you've heard Gender's report. Entertain a motion to accept it. I mean, to accept the line of credit. So moved. I got a second. I got a motion and a second to approve the line of credit. Any questions for Ginger on that? It's with one bank, previously Bank of Putnam County. No better interest, I suppose, lower They're our current bank, and um, so they're our banking partners. So we have our general fund checking account there, and so typically all our banking needs are serviced through Bank of Putnam County. Um, I'm not sure as far as like, you know, with another bank, but um, we can definitely make that next year at our um, next renewal in another 18 months. But typically what we get from them is pretty competitive with other financial institutions. Okay, any further questions? Stop. Roll call, please. Dale Raven? Yes. August Spears? Yes. Lori Stringfield? Yes. 
Yes. James Mayberry? Yes. Kelly Tipton? Bennett Armstrong? Yes. Billy Adcock? Yes. Andy Hayes? Yes. Lori Williams? Yes. Barbara Wheeler? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Yes. Linda Pastrick? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. John Martin? Yes. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sarah Murray Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. John Hollingsworth? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. John Chastain? Yes. Fred Prater? Yes. Aaron Davis? Yes. Jimmy Robinson? Yes. Charles Sullivan? Yes. A motion carried. Next, number eight. Thank you, Ginger. I'm sorry. Next is our executive director's report. Mark. Okay, just want to touch base on a few things we've had going on. Uh, uh, the main thing that's probably been on Ginger and my plate for the last uh, four or five months and leading up to uh, last week is our sunset audit. Uh, this is a new experience for Ginger and myself, and, and I'm not sure if you're familiar, virtually all state agencies, state departments, uh, state-created entities have to go through a sunset review every so many years. Uh, to make sure that they are still uh, needed and uh, that the General Assembly wants to keep them in place. Development districts, sort of a side note, is virtually the only created entity in state law that does not have to go through sunset on it. So this was a new experience for Ginger and myself. Uh, the last time we went through, they would received a six-year extension. Uh, and what that entails is the comptroller comes in, takes a look at the programmatic work, the organization of the structure, uh, the structure of the organization, and then they present a, a report to the uh, a subcommittee of government ops. Uh, and Ginger and I had to go down and talk with them last week uh, with the legislative committee and give a presentation to them about our agency, a report of the audit, uh, along with the comptroller's office. Uh, come out of that with a five-year extension. Uh, which we were thrilled about. One thing that did come out of that, we had uh, a short discussion in our audit committee meeting last week, and, and we'll probably come back sometime the first of the year and talk about this in more detail. Uh, the committee has asked, not just for Upper Cumberland, but all HRAs uh, to work with the comptroller about coming up with a bill that looks at our board structure. They really looked at the size of the governing boards, uh, how everything is structured. Um, they have had a push going on for the last several years, starting with uh, reducing the size of, of UT's board, and they've been looking at other entities, trying to reduce the size of the boards, uh, and they want to take a look at ours as well. So uh, that is something they, they have asked us to work with the comptrollers about possible uh, ways to restructure our board, and when we know more about that, we'll probably come back and have a further discussion uh, somewhere down the road. Uh, for the most part, we come out with uh, fairly uh, a good audit. I felt like uh, they looked obviously about the structure of the boards, the attendance, obviously attendance today. We, we've made a quorum in both these meetings, but uh, barely uh, out of 61 members. Uh, and that was certainly a, a point of contention uh, with the legislative committee uh, last week. Um, we did have a couple of little small findings. One had to do with the merger where both agencies were coming together under that shared administrative program. Uh, we had a few hiccups there, but we've got that all worked out. But for the most part, we had a good audit. We was very pleased with the process, but sometime probably in February, we'll have a better idea uh, of what they're looking at, uh, how they'd like to restructure this board. And, and when that, when we know that, we'll have a further conversation. I uh, do want to give a couple updates on a couple programs. Um, obviously, this last year with everything going on, we struggled, uh, continue to struggle financially with a couple programs. Uh, we have made a decision with our group home that we oversaw in Cumberland County. 
we closed it down and merged it with the India Mound location in DeKalb County. Uh, we did that for a cost savings uh, from a cost savings perspective. Plus, it was just not a it, it always struggled up in Cumberland County in that it's located inside the city limits, right there close to Walmart, and it's too enticing for those young men uh, to to uh, to run. And, and to get into trouble up there. Our other facilities are all in a very remote locations. Uh, so we made the conscious decision to close that facility and merge it with our Indian Mail uh, facility. Uh, nutrition is one that we've struggled for years at HRA. Uh, as of the end of this year, we will be transitioning that off uh, the, the AAAD uh, under the, the direction of the development district has been working with a, a local industry, a local company that would take that on uh, and do the delivery portion of that. Uh, we have not signed contracts, so I, I'm really hesitant to name any names, uh, but uh, it is an institution that I think everybody will be very familiar with, and they are very capable in the delivery of food, and I'll just leave it at that. So they'll be taking that over. Uh, because of these two moves, and that's part of the, the confidence we have in looking at our budget to where we project a, uh, a surplus. And, and we would have had a surplus this year had the COVID uh, not occurred. We're pretty confident of that. Uh, transportation, uh, good and bad. I'll, I'll hit the bad first. Uh, we've got a lot of drivers. We've got a lot of staff out right now. And I will give you just a heads up in the different communities uh, across the region. Uh, our ability to, to transport people may suffer for a couple of weeks. Uh, we are, I'm getting notifications all morning about different drivers that uh, are being quarantined or coming down sick. And it may just be a sheer numbers uh, situation where we have to scale back and just worry about uh, or sort of prioritize our trips in the next couple of weeks. I know in the Cookville office, uh, I, they keep using the term dropping like flies, and that is about the truth. Uh, we're, we're probably at 10 or more in just this last few days uh, that have had to go home. So uh, obviously we may have to look at what goes on over this holiday period. We may have to shut down for a little bit. And so just bear with us. We're trying to work through this as soon as we get through all these quarantines and the sickness will be back at full strength. Positive as far as transportation, we had a great meeting last week. We sat down and looked out for the next two to three years uh, with everything going on with additional funds. Every, it seems like every stimulus package that has come along has included money for transportation. And there's, in fact, in this next one, they're being discussed, there's even more money. And because of that, transportation is very strong. You see there in our financial report or budget that Ginger presented, we're, we're looking at putting money back in reserves. Uh, and that's just because we've got a lot of money coming our way and we're able, there's a lot of the money coming our way that doesn't have the strings that we normally are accustomed to. So we're able to run far, uh, far more efficient and put some money back. So we're very excited about that. Uh, it looks to be for the next three years, we should be in a really strong position when it comes to transportation. So we're looking at how these contracts are playing out. Now that is just setting us up. Uh, I'll go ahead and you know, you're, you're gonna hear this mentioned uh, probably for the next two to three years and I'll go ahead and start it today. Uh, we have to prepare for uh, Cookville becoming an urbanized area. And when that happens, uh, you'll have two transit systems. There'll be a small urban that operates inside that urban footprint in Cookville and whatever other additional areas it takes in. Uh, and then we'll have the rural system. So we'll be in, in three years, we're going to have basically two systems that we're operating and we'll have to take that into account. So, but uh, with all this going on, all the additional monies that's setting us up in a very good spot for that to occur two to three years down the road. Uh, as far as the uh, upcoming human resource agency, Linnell mentioned that number 1.9 million that had gone out in light heat payments. Uh, our county office staffs have put out a ton of services over this last year, and I am extremely proud of them. Uh, they've weathered the storms, it seems like, day in and day out. Uh, we've continued to transport people. We've continued to, to help with electric payments, rent payments, nutrition. Uh, our staffs have done a yeoman's work, and I'm very proud of them. And uh, uh, I just hope 
we can get back to normal sometime soon. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, Mark. Anyone have any questions for Mark? If not, we'll go to the next one. This is our public comments from our partners. Uh, and I don't want to miss anybody, so I'm just going to open the floor up. Does anyone have anything here from our partners they'd like to say? Okay. If not, we'll go to the nomination committee report. Once again, we had the nominee committee met, and they um, recommended that uh, Randy Hattie be chairman of the upcoming development of Human Resource Agency and Jeff Mason be vice chairman uh, of this. And I spoke wrong a while ago with uh, Randy Porter. Uh, it will be Mickey Robinson, the secretary, and Dean Wayne Robinson, the treasurer of the UCHRA. Got that right this time. Okay. So, Randy, if you want to come up, we'll do an oath. Dean Wayne, you want to come up too? Jeff Mason, are you still on there? I want you to stand up and raise your right hand again. Yes. <clears throat> I haven't seen you. Okay. okay. And ben set me up today to be the vice chairman to do this. Why? Once I do this, it gets turned over to you again, right now. We're going to shake that. Anyway, this is the oath of office. You raise your hand, right hand. Do you affirm that you faithfully undertake and perform the duties of the offices which you're about to assume and that you will diligently strive through your work in your offices for closer cooperation among the member uh, governments of the upcoming uh, Human Resource Agency for the future of the concept of regional development and improvement coordination of services for all citizens of upcoming? I do. I do. I do. Okay, thank you, Jeff. All right, Randy, you've got two things here to, uh, actually you've got three uh, other things to consider here. Number one, the election of alcohol. Uh, uh, All right, so we do the policy council. What's yeah. pertaining to that? Three new mayors. Three new mayors. Hey, this is Alan Foster. I, I'm, you know, not right there. Did I miss the vote on the nominating the election of officers? We did not do that. We did not. I'm sorry. I missed okay. that. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. Well, let me share your roll here in just a second. Okay. Getting ahead of myself. Thank you, Alan, for bringing that to my attention. I didn't know I was going to be doing this today. You're doing a good job. You are. Man. Right. Could you call roll, please? Mayor Reagan? Yes. Harness Pierce? Yes. Lori Streetfield? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayer? Yes. Kelly Tipton? Yes. Lynn Armstrong? Yes. Lynn McCracken? Yes. Randy Hattie? Staying. Lori Williams? Yes. Margaret Wheeler? Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilborn? Yes. Linda Pastry? Yes. Andy Porter? Yes. John Martin? Yes. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Abstain. Sabre Marie Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. Don Collinsworth? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Ron Chastain? Yes. Trent Crater? Yes. Marilyn Davis? Yes. Denny Robinson? Yes. Charles Sutton? Yes. Motion. 
motion passed. With that being said, can we take the swearing in that we did as good? Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ryder. Appreciate that. Next thing on the agenda is the UCHR Pal Policy Council. I think this is an approval from the Policy Council, is that correct? And there was three uh, city mayors that were added to it. Uh, those were James Mayberry, Sarah Marie Smith, and um, John Martin, uh, Baxter City Mayor. So the rest, I believe, uh, stays the same. This was nomination. Motion to approve the Policy Council board. Got a motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Bill Reagan, motion or a second, either one. So Dale seconds. Mr. Holland, I think, made a motion. And Dale Reagan, second. You got a motion and a second. Any comments about this or questions? If not, we'll ask Ms. Sherry to call roll. Dale Reagan? Yes. On the spheres? Yes. Lori Stringfield? Yes. Alan Foster? Yes. James Mayberry? Abstain. Kelly Tipton? Yes. Bennett Armstrong? Yes. Demi Adcock? Yes. Randy Eddy? Yes. Lori Williams? Barbara Wheeler? Yes. Steve Jones? Yes. Jerry Wilmore? Linda Pastry? Yes. Randy Porter? Yes. John Martin? Mm -hmm. JJ Reels? Yes. Jeff Mason? Yes. Sarah Marie Smith? Yes. John Potts? Yes. John Potts? Yes. Jimmy Haley? Yes. Ron Chastain? Yes. <clears throat> Trent Prater? Yes. Marilyn Davis? Yes. Denny Robinson? Yes. Charles Salton? Yes. Motion passed. All righty, thank you all for that. Um, let me say that it's an honor to serve both of the boards. I'm not sure how that's gonna work. I think some of the mayors are giving me their condolences. Uh, we were asked to try to do this to see if it would flu be more fluid. And so we're willing to give this a shot. I hope so, but it is an honor to serve as the chair. And look forward to the coming year, uh, hopefully soon without COVID. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Uh, just, just curious if everybody's on the same board as me, they don't want this over. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask you, is there any other business to come for? Yes, sir, Mr. Trollis. We have a board member that's not been here today, and Cherry's had to come to me several times. Mark, his staff may be aware of it. Mark loves it. He's had surgery, kidney, and lung. That's too good. But he's doing very well right now. You know, I always come home and you know, I'm just saying Thomas. Did not know that. Right. Just remember me, just prior prior. Yeah, just remember Mr. Marvin Lusk, uh, Mr. Charles was telling the South Sick, for those of you who might not have heard on the Zoom. Um, so just remember him. You know, I, I don't know about y'all, but you know, COVID's running rapid in our communities. There's no doubt sickness is up, uh, hospitalizations, and uh, a lot of prayers needed. Uh, I, I, I tell you. Uh, yeah. We feel helpless, uh, but one thing we don't lose is our ability to lift up uh, the needs of our communities with prayer. So uh, I appreciate you mentioning that, and we all need to band together uh, to do that. If there's not, is there any other business, any other comments? I just want to say thank you to the fellow mayors and other folks. We appreciate you putting your uh, blessing us, hopefully, in the closet. You're welcome. We're glad to have y'all on the Policy Council. Uh, council. But, uh, Mr. Mark, uh, uh, Director Farley mentioned a minute ago, uh, one of the things that we've having a problem with is participation. So we definitely want to get the participation of those who uh, can take the time, maybe don't, to ain't so far away and, and can show up because that's a big deal. Um, uh, you know, that was one of our sunset audit findings that was, uh, that, you know, Mr. Rader had mentioned in our uh, 
when we had our audit committee meeting that, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we've got to address because we've got to have participation in these to meet our charter. And so it's hugely important. All righty, again, let me say this before we adjourn. Uh, UCHRA, uh, I know y'all have had your hands tied, uh, just like the development district, unprecedented um, times, and y'all have had to work so hard. Uh, I've heard all the stories about people that are, y'all go get groceries, you take, you know, you try, you lay them on the porch uh, for people during this time. You've tried to put the help, you know, have done everything. Uh, that you can do and just really appreciate your efforts and what you're doing and a great job of getting the resources that we have, uh, that you have out to the, the consumers and the constituents. And we just appreciate that, okay? Just want you to know that from the mayor's point of view. Thank you for your hard work and all that you're doing. And um, hopefully it'll get better soon, okay? All right, if there will not be any other business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Ms. Sarah, second by Steve Jones. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.